The UK government have set a target for the UK to reduce its emissions by 80% by 2050. They've also set a target for aviation and we're committed to delivering on it. The government has made it clear that the industry's growth will be capped to achieve its CO2 target, so it's in all our interest to work together to do all that we can to meet and exceed it. The UK industry is leading the world in our collective approach to pioneer new techniques and procedures which will improve our environmental performance. With air travel forecast to resume long-term growth, air traffic control has a key role to play in reducing its CO2 footprint. By improving airspace design and procedures, and working closely with airports and airlines, it can help aircraft achieve the perfect flight. So what makes a perfect flight? The aircraft moves through a continuous climb with constant acceleration. As it enters the cruise phase, the aircraft attains higher speeds and greater range as the fuel is used to gain distance and height as its mass falls. The descent follows a smooth, continuous profile, landing without the need for airborne holding. However, aircraft may not always be able to fly a perfect flight profile. Maintaining safe separation, weather conditions and the tactical and operational demands of airspace boundaries can all compromise it. We can't eradicate these, but we can deliver better flight planning, better altitude and speed profiles, and shorter, more direct routes. Overall, aircraft operating under NAT's control in 2009 emitted 22.4 million tonnes of CO2. NAT's has set a target to reduce this by an average 10% per flight by 2020. How can we work with our industry partners to deliver it? At airports, Taxiing is the biggest contributor to aviation CO2. But by closing down two engines on taxi-in, a Boeing 747 can save 120 kilos of fuel. Multiplied by many hundreds of flights each day, this alone can save thousands of tons of fuel and emissions every week. A continuous climb departure can save a long-haul aircraft 1.5 tons of fuel. That's 4.5 tons of CO2. We are coordinating with airlines and air traffic control at other airports to hold aircraft on stand when there are known delays at the destination airport, which can save around 250 kilos of CO2 per minute. Reducing the amount of track miles an aircraft flies and giving it its optimum cruise altitude also decreases emissions. Airborne holding accounts for 2% of all CO2 in NAT's controlled airspace and NATS is actively developing arrival management tools to minimise this. In July 2010, NATS, British Airways and BAA tested the perfect flight theory on a shuttle flight between London and Edinburgh. It saved a third of a tonne of fuel, more than 10%. The congested airspace of South East England limits the industry's ability to achieve perfect flight as the norm, but we have proved what it can deliver. The perfect flight is now in the industry's sights, and just as the UK pioneered the use of continuous descent approach, so we can pioneer a through-flight experience to cut fuel burn and emissions. Better flight planning and speed control can deliver efficiencies now. Best practice needs to become second nature. Better technologies and procedures within the next five years will help improve trajectories and reduce airborne holding. Within 10 years, a visionary approach to redesigning airspace could significantly improve the efficiency of our crowded skies and flight profiles. This is all part of achieving the single European sky to which the UK is committed. We're working with partners in Europe and globally to deliver a clear environmental agenda through CESAR, CANZO, ICAO and sustainable aviation. The UK target for aviation to reduce our emissions to 2005 levels by 2050 is a challenge, but we know at Sustainable Aviation that we can do it, through new technology, through new fuels and through working together to improve the efficiency of our operations. Mm -hmm.